Okay, we're here at the Renaissance Festival and I tried to get a pretzel. Well, they're out of pretzels this entire place, so I guess we're gonna have to go back and learn to make our own. What we eat today comes from generations of trial and error, accidental discovery, and ever-expanding trade where we're exploring the origins and the history of some of our favorite foods of today, as well as the tools were invented along the way to make them. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. The history of the pretzel is a little twisted. Around the year 610, an Italian monk invented the pretzel as a reward to children who learned their prayers. The pretzels were made with strips of baked dough, folded to resemble arms crossing the chest, and were called fretiola, or little rewards. However, the modern day interpretation of the historical shape of the pretzel is a little more practical, with the holes being used to hang the pretzels up or to stack them on a central column, as shown in this painting from 1681. The Catholic Church played an early role in the significance of the pretzel, as the absence of eggs, lard, and dairy from basic pretzel dough makes it an ideal food to consume during Lent, when these ingredients are expressly forbidden. In the Christian Church, pretzels became a precursor to the modern day Easter eggs, with pretzels being hidden on Easter morning. The religious importance of pretzels has always been prevalent and the idiom tying the knot has been linked to a 17th century Swiss custom of sealing the bonds of matrimony with a tied pretzel, the symbology meant to invoke good luck in undying love. 17th century children also similarly wore pretzel necklaces on New Year's to symbolize good luck and prosperity for the coming year. But first a word from today's sponsor, Mecarina Robot Showdown. If this ever happened to you, you're playing a game, you're doing really good, you turn a corner and you run into the, the big spender. That would never happen playing Mech Arena. It's a competitive five versus five shooter where progression is based on skill, how it should be. All these mechs, weapons, maps, and game modes are open for play right away. And I lost, but this won't stop my efforts to improve and conquer my enemies. And I won. There are plenty of free ways to progress through the game and get resources, like attending in-game events, where you can get new skins and weapons and clean dailies. Two new maps just got released, so you have to check that out, along with the Battle Pass, which has tons of special missions and some very formidable rewards to win. Use my personal link or scan the QR code to get one black carbon skin, 308 coins, and 50,000 credits to help kickstart your game. And if you're quick, you can add me, and you can team up and defeat our enemies. Download Mech Arena Robot Showdown today. Some mustard here we can grow. The leaves will make a kind of a spicy leaf, but then the seeds that it'll eventually produce can be ground up to make the condiment of mustard. Now they've progressed in their life cycle and grew the flowers. Now they are in the process of producing the pods. And inside these pods, you have the mustard seeds. Really the best way to harvest these is to just cut the whole plant before they fully mature, then hang them to dry for two weeks. And then everything should be dried and ready to harvest. And uh, you can just start removing the seeds. Meanwhile, for the yeast, we had a wild culture we previously cultivated. As well as the variety of grains we grew in the garden, which included both wheat and rye berries. All right, like I said, we're making our own pretzel. So here we have the wheat berry rye berry, our starter, and some water. One at a time. I'm just kidding. Boink. Would have been nice if they had it at the, the Renaissance Festival. All right, now to do the same thing with the rye berries. Whoa. What? All right, add in the rye berry. All right, we're gonna move on to the starter portion. So the yeast is a live culture, so it does not like to be cold. We're gonna add it to the warm water and start to mix it in. All right, I'm just gonna try to fold her in there. We're gonna make the dough 
shaggy. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's not super shaggy yet. All right, we got some rock salt, and rock salt is way more potent than table salt, so I'm just gonna get a little bit here. Hitting rock salt with a rock. Oh yeah. Salt. We probably should have mixed it in beforehand, but I forgot, so you know what? We're doing it now. All right, so got the dough ready for the pretzel. Gonna let it rise overnight, and then do some rolling and shaping. All right, so I got all the mustard I grew and let uh, go to seed, let it dry out. And now I'm going to collect the seeds and I uh, got all the pods because they're dried up. They're pretty brittle and the seeds just kind of fall out. They've already fallen out a bunch and they're falling out before. And I can tell because where I set these down for just a little bit are now a whole patch of mustard plants are growing. So there's probably going to be a bunch of mustard here come next spring. So I'm just going to hit this with a stick. But the first step is really important. You need to get your little butterfly guy and uh, you got to Get him on his perch so he's out of the way and now get going. I already got a fair amount of stuff in there. We've got a lot of seeds already. Oh yeah. I wonder if they bounce. A little bit. I was about the seeds all sifted and separated the best we could. A small little bit of fiber here and there, but uh, that shouldn't hurt anything. Just add a little extra character. It's so gonna grind up half of the mustard to make a paste, and then leave the other half for uh, coarse ground mustard. And then we have, from previous projects, got some beer, got some vinegar, and some sugar from our sugar beets. <laughs> All right, I'll let these uh, proof overnight and start kneading them a little bit and start making some pretzels. Dough seems pretty doughy, but a little stiff, but uh, I dried out too much, but I think it's think it'll work pretty good. Some nice elasticity to it. So now we have the pretzels made, we're gonna do a little process to kind of induce the browning on the outside to give it a mylar reaction. And for that, you use an alkaline. And this is where the secret ingredient of drain cleaner comes from. So we have lye we made in our soap episode, but first we're gonna do it with a little something a little bit less caustic, which is soda ash, which is the compound we got from a lake in Wyoming that we actually used it to make the lye in our soap episode. So we're gonna try both ways and see what gives a better result. So we have a solution to that, it's about 6%. We're gonna put the pretzel in there for 30 seconds on one side, flip it, put it on the other side, and then we'll be ready to bake it. It looks like it worked. It's a little bit yellower now. And now we have the lye solution. This is a little bit more dilute at 4%. It should be a lot more caustic. All right, so you can tell it worked because it's yellow. Canary yellow means it worked. And just to be safe, we're gonna dip it in water and rinse it. Next, to bake them. <laughs> this is a pretzel. <laughs> Right on. Ah. Nice. All right, the lye pretzel. Oh yeah. Put that in there, I think like 
10 minutes. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that brown. Whoo. Oh yeah. Now that is nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. All right, well, they're baked. So the first test, let's see if there's still lye on it. With soap, at least you, you can stick your tongue to it and if it feel a bit of a zap, that means there's lye. Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> All right, let's give it a shot. It's pretty, pretty well baked, maybe a little dough in the middle. Got a mustard dip. Pretty good. Very spicy and uh, <laughs> right to my nose. <laughs> it smells spicy. <laughs> Let me try the pretzel uh, without mustard. It is cooked all the way through. Uh, okay. Mm. I finally got my pretzel. <laughs> mm. Good pretzel. Yeah, I like it. And so comparing the two, I think the uh, soda ash one did turn out a little better. It was a little overbaked, has a slight, slight burnt taste to it. Yeah, they're both good. This one I think was a little bit better. It's just like a pretzel, but just a little bit heartier. The flour just isn't as refined. The mustard is really spicy. Yeah, it, it just smells like horseradish. Potent, I don't think I've had mustard that, that potent. All right, so uh, growing all the wheat and the mustard, doing all the prep work, we're bringing in about $189 for these two pretzels. <laughs> Worth it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.